good morning. Turn to your neighbor and tell him what if. What if. Ask him what if. It is good to be standing before you this morning, um, but I will admit and confess to you as we come to our message and our word this morning, it's been a hard week. And uh, raise your hand if anybody's had a, a couple of things this week that you're like, oh, I wish that didn't happen. Yeah, anybody? Yeah, there's some of us that can raise. Some of us are like, yeah, I'm glad that did happen. Um, and uh, it is uh, truly uh, both inspiring, convicting, and uh honestly just leaves me in awe sometimes the way that God works and reveals himself through scripture and uh, come to you this morning with this question from last week into this week of everything that we see going on in the church and the world and reading scripture the question is Jesus did you ever get tired did you ever just take a sigh and say what if this week was different what if this day was different if this didn't happen and, uh, you know, that has been my heart all week, this question of what if. And uh, I'll tell you what, um, I think I, I asked for more than I was wanting to bargain with, uh, with God. And, and a few different stories I can tell you and share with you, all the way from uh, getting no sleep to seeing the moon and being reminded of God's light to the girls getting locked in the van and having to break a window out and, and get them out with the ambulance and the cops and all these things. He's like, oh my gosh, will it ever end? So we got to open God's word. What we're going to read this morning uh, is in the Gospel of John, starting off in chapter 8. And before we read these words, there's a little context here. Jesus is uh, teaching the disciples. He's teaching uh, the community. He's teaching the church. And uh, there's these uh, church leaders who found this woman who is caught in adultery, and they bring her, they literally, the imagery is they drag her into the church, per se, and they put her before Jesus and expose all of her sin. And Jesus looks at all of these church leaders and this woman, and he says to them, he says, if you are without sin, cast the first stone. And one by one, each of these individuals leave. And then it's the woman standing by herself, and Jesus says, where are your accusers? And she says, they have all left. Jesus says, you shall go to and sin no more. Last week, Pastor Tyler brought us an amazing message of truth to who God is. And this week, we continue in the light of that, of Jesus continuing to reveal to us in the midst of our lives who he truly is. And so I want to read these words to us. John chapter 8, starting in verse 12, ending in verse 12. 30. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Once more, Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is that why he says, where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you did not believe that I am he. You will indeed die in your sins. Who are you, they asked. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning, Jesus replied. 
I have much to say, much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is trustworthy, and I have heard from him. I tell the world. They did not understand what he was telling them about and his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many believed. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we pray for your word this morning, the word of truth, that it would humble our hearts, that it would convict, that it would reveal within us the ways in which we have not aligned with it, the ways in which, Lord, you are calling us into a deeper relationship with you. And God, I pray in these words that we have just read aloud, that as you have spoken, people have believed. So Lord, strengthen our hearts, give us courage today that we would believe in you. In Jesus' name. It was 9.37 p.m. Wednesday night. It had been an extremely long day, but I had to sit down and write the sermon. God was pushing me so hard that I couldn't wait any longer. And what I'm about to say this morning is extremely difficult, not only for, my, for myself, but I believe for each of us. And, and for some of you, there's going to be some things that may uh, rub you the wrong way. Some of you that might get upset at me. Some of you that are like, oh, that doesn't even apply to me. I don't even care about that. Others, you are going to say, yes, that was spot on. I needed to hear that. And so every single one of us right here, right now, and all of our differences and all of our struggles and success and our tears and our anger and our joy, all of our what ifs, I'm asking for this moment for us to buckle up in those together. Earlier in the day on Wednesday, I was running late to get to the office and uh, Tyler can attest to this. It seems like the devil comes out on Wednesdays for us. Wednesdays are just, they're, they're sometimes not good days for Tyler and I. And uh, we, we sometimes break down. And uh, I'm running out the door late to the office. I went out to the barn to find all the horses there but one. So I go out the back side of the barn. And there's Amy's horse, Gunner, on the other side of the electric fence that's supposed to be on. And he's got cockaburs in his mane. And he's looking at me like, hey, let me in time to go eat so i go over to the electric fence and figuring it was on i grabbed it it's not on it's of course so i open the fence he runs up to the barn i'm like oh, oh, just one more thing before he gets off so i go to the barn to feed the animals and i'm like yes uh, it's it's hot there's flies i gotta plug everything in so i start plugging in fans and i forgot that our, our old barn is kind of finicky and if you plug in too many uh things into one outlet all the breakers pop and so i'm just in a hurry and plugging stuff in and pop i'm like oh my gosh so I unplug stuff, flip the breaker, and I get in the car, and I get here to the office. And I'm sitting in the parking lot, and I'm just like, oh, I need to look at my schedule for the day. But for some reason, for some reason, I could not get that darn electric fence and those breakers off my mind. Sure, I've flipped those breakers a million times. And those of you that are electricians, you're like, I'm going to talk to him after church. We've got to fix that. Some of you are like, Hey, that electric fence shouldn't do that. I know, it's covered in uh, uh, poison ivy all along our neighbor's yard and ours too. I just haven't uh, geared up to get it all down and spray it all. So I know the fence isn't working right. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But you know what I, I'm, say, I'm thinking here in the parking lot? I was like, man, I didn't need that this morning. I, I just I didn't need one more thing on my plate. And by golly, it's... It's a, a gosh darn electric fence and a breaker. It's not that big of a deal. So I look at my schedule and I start getting excited. And then I keep going back. I'm like, Lord, why are you telling me? Why am I coming back to this breaker and this electric fence? And then it came on the radio, all the news about Haiti. All of those who have lost their lives and those that are still missing and struggling. And then going straight into Afghanistan and everything that's taking place and in our own government, in our own community, and I'm just rushed and bombarded, and I literally am struggling to get out of the truck to go into the office. And then I was reminded of one of our scriptures this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. 
In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. The beginning. The word. God. He was the word. All things are made through him. In him was life. Life that was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. Now wait a second. Have we not seen the news? Have we not looked around at what is happening? Think with me for a moment. Reflect. What have you heard this week? What have you seen this week? That has broken your heart. It's made you angry. It's made you cry. If I get to a point Wednesday after I get done with some meetings in the afternoon, I come home and I'm like, Amy, I just I can't do it. Think about Haiti, Afghanistan. Think about murder and cancer. Think about sex trafficking, racial divisions, divorce, affairs, addictions, idolatry, pride, selfishness, the state of our church, our state, our government, anxiety, depression, suicide, anger, laziness, self-entitlement, occupied lives, busyness, stressed and stretched beyond what we are able to do in life. Have you or can you relate? Are your breakers about to trip? As far as the church goes, we live in a broken state of the church where half of the church believes Jesus is true and real and the other doesn't. The word that we opened up with in the Gospel of John, Jesus is telling them, I am the light, I am the one that God sent to you, and they're still saying, no, I don't believe it. Even today, there are people who are still saying, no, I don't believe it. A church where discipleship doesn't mean anything but going to church to feel good about something. Where the fix doesn't come from sticking to the gospel, but implementing some business ideal from 1990. Where there's leadership that isn't honest to say it's hard out there and it's struggling and there's so much going on that, you know what, we're trying our best to keep our head above water. A church that doesn't call out the place that the devil might have a foothold because it might offend somebody's lifestyle and their choices. Everywhere we turn, people are hurt, they're broken, they're sick, they're spiritually dead, afraid, anxious, more focused on the world and giving their political viewpoint, and deathly scared of talking about Jesus. We as a church are so consumed with the milk that we're drinking because it's easier than opening the word and asking God to come in, reveal your word, your truth to us. A church that's more worried about the translation that we're reading than the fact that we're actually in the word. A church that's dedicated and dictated by schedules and gets nothing but the leftovers. A church that has believed it's someone else's problem. A church that puts God in a box and only knocks when it's convenient church that is looking for the world to solve all its problems a church to have right direction or the next catchy thing to bring people in a church that doesn't invite or rely on the holy spirit but a church that relies on their own intuition and their own knowledge but here's the thing good vibes don't fix or heal anything think about the world we see a world crying in agony crying for rescue for redemption for salvation states are burning no one wants to work common sense seems to have left on the last train this and that community this government this school board all of it everybody's fighting over the decisions and the hard ones that need to be made a house divided is not about a football game anymore. It's about vaccinated or not, mask or not, Delta variant. What about the Alpha and the Omega? Do you align with my politics? If you don't, you hate me. Spit and spat behind a screen instead of talking face to face. A world where we struggle to get from here to there, please this person or that person, all while the family down the street is struggling, whether they pay the electric bill or put food on the table. 
a world that turns their back on one another. A world that is fine with injustices, lives in provisions, perversions and hates, discriminates, thrives on hypocrisy, and whatever it takes to get to the next level. A world where noise distracts us from the truth. A world that doesn't want a church. A, A world that, as Jesus says, hated him will also hate us. Do you hear me? Does any of this resonate? Are are you feeling anything, any truth, any resemblance, any relation to this? Because you and me, brothers and sisters, we all have an outlet. We all have breaker, and we have breaking points. And there are so many things that we could take, not only within the church, but in the world. And there are so many different things trying to zap the power, the source from us, our life, everything about us, everything. A church and a world that is broken and full of pain. Can it get any worse? When we focus so much on what is going on, we tend to ask, what if? What if all this darkness didn't have to be? And I believe our what if comes from the short circuit of our souls. We isolate ourselves. And when we rely on ourselves, the breaker will flip. We tend to tap into the wrong power source. And every time we do, the lights go out. We see a church that is looking to the world to solve all of our problems but we know the solution it's the good news the gospel of Jesus Christ I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life the people living in darkness have seen a great light On those living in the land, the shadow of death, a light has dawned. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. If we walk in the light, he is in the light. And we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus. His son purifies us from all sin. And if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the lamb is the lamp. 
have your breakers flipped? Have we had enough? Who are we trying to plug into? What fence in your life do you need to fix? What breaker box do you need to tend to? If it's God's eternal light through His Son, Jesus Christ, no matter how dark, no matter how depressing or pressing in upon our lives it is, He and His light will always cast out the darkness. So in everything that we experience and see and go through, God's calling us to a choice. The choice is either our panel, our breaker box of life, where we're going to have to continue to go back and flip the breaker and go back and tend to the broken fence or live into His eternal breaker where there's nothing in our lives, nothing in this world, that can separate us from his life and his light. Nothing. Nothing. For he is light. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, Sometimes it's hard to acknowledge or even admit that it's easier or more comfortable for us to live in the dark. But God, in your word, your truth, that you've spoken, that you've breathed upon us, the word is part of your light. We ask, God, that you would shine within us and shine upon us the ways that we've tried to hide, ways that we've struggled, the things that we have been afraid of flipping that breaker on because of this or that. I don't know where each and every single one of us is right now. But if you just want to repeat these words after me, just repeat them to yourself and to God. Lord, I'm here. God, I confess that I've tried to rely on myself and not you. God, I confess that have been distracted by the darkness of sin in this world. But God, I hear you. The light of our lives. And Lord, there's nothing more than I want for you to come into my heart you would dwell within me through the power of your Holy Spirit. That you would be at work making your kingdom your city within my life. To be built on a hill and a light for all to see. To see what you are doing. And that you are God, and I'm not, that you're in control, and I'm not. I thank you, Jesus. God, I ask for anybody that has spoken those words to themselves, they've 
even other words, God, that you would move within their lives, that you would reveal to them yourself. As you call us together as your church, one body of many different parts, that you call us together different minds, places, experiences. That you would unite us together in your light and your love through your son Jesus Christ, the truth in which he died on the cross. Gave his life for ours. And was resurrected. Where he now sits at the right hand of you. God, that is our what if. I want to thank you and praise you and ask for forgiveness in the times that we forget that. We love you, Lord. So God, now as we go from this sanctuary, as we go from this place of worship today, may your light be the lamp of our feet. May your love guide us in our words and our thoughts and every action. And would you allow our light that you give to shine into somebody else's darkness. Holy and truly, your sons and daughters. Go and be blessed, brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.